guys, it's Reagan, and today I'm going to be talking about my summer reading wrap-up. So, for me, school starts on August 7th, so that really sucks. So, basically, my summer doesn't really line up with the calendar year, since summer ends, like, September 20th, but whatever. I'm just going to review all the books that I've read in May through July, so let's get started. The first book I read in May was A Court of Mings in Ruin. So, I really enjoyed this book. It is the third book slash kind of finale in the Quarter of Thorns and Roses series um, because after this book, it's just going to be novellas in the world, but the Pharaoh storyline is over and her character arc is done. So, that's kind of fascinating. I have to see what Sarah J. Mass does with that, but I still really, really enjoy this book. Now this book is a lot about, has a lot of war going on in it, and I do think that there needed to be a little bit more death and destruction, but you know, I mean, is it a little, some points a little too convenient? Maybe. So that's kind of my fault with it, but I really, really enjoyed this series. The first one starts with Feyre. She is actually human, but her, where she lives is actually divided into the human kind of realm, and then there's also the Fey realm. So. There's a wall that divides them. She ends up killing a Fey warrior, and because she killed the Fey warrior, she gets taken by the High Lord of the Spring Court. She has to break this curse that's on him, and that's been on him for 50 years. And the scene is Beauty and the Beast retelling. The next one is kind of a Hades and Persephone retelling. And then this one, I don't know what kind of retelling this is. I don't know, but um, it's kind of fascinating. But I will tell you, though, that I loved of Court and Miss Fury so much better than this book just because it's by far and away the best book because I just love the character development in that and the real focus on re the relationships and it was just so good. But this book was also really good so I really enjoyed it. The next book I read is A Flame in the Mist by Renee Audier. So this book was super enjoyable because I love Renee Audier's writing style. Um, I feel like her books are super easy to read, you can really get wrapped up in them, and you can finish them super quickly. Um, at least for me anyway, usually I always finish your books in like a day, and I finish most books in a day, but I just read these so fast because they're just so good and so suspenseful. And this book is about Mariko, and there's assassination attempt on her, and basically her whole caravan to go marry one of the princes to the emperor. She is the only survivor of that, and so she infiltrates the Black Clan as a boy to see why somebody wanted to kill her and all this stuff. So it's really fascinating, really, really enjoyable, and I'm really excited for the next book in this duology, which will come out next summer. Okay, so next I read actually The Mortal Instruments. I do not have them with me because I read them from the library, but the first book I read was City of Bones, but I actually read that in March. So I read City of Ashes through City of Heavenly Fire, and let me just tell you, I loved it. I love the Shadow World. I really love Shadowhunters, how they're half human, half angels, and then you have still, like, the humans, the mundane, and the Shadowhunters protect the mundanes from demons, so that's kind of neat. They're kind of really just kicking butt, and, oh, they're just so good. And then also you have your warlocks, which are half demon, half human. You have your... Fairies, which are half demon, half angel, and then you have your werewolves and vampires, which are both infected with a demon disease. So it's really cool, really, really interesting, and I loved it. I loved Clary and her, how she discovers the Shadow World and all how much she grows throughout the series. I find that really fascinating. All the relationships, like all the ships in this series, are really amazing. There's a lot of great OTPs in this, so it was really cool. I loved it. Couldn't stop reading it and just marathoned it. It was just so good. And so I just love Cassandra Clare's Shadow World. So I'm really, I was really excited and I also read some more, which I'll talk about in a minute. So next I read Trials of Apollo the Dark Prophecy by Rick Riordan. So here's a video. I... <sighs> It took me so long to read this book because this book came out on May 2nd, which is right when all my AP tests were going on, and it took me like the longest to read this book out of any of Rick's books. This series is about Apollo, and he's human, and he has to come back, he's punished by Zeus to kind of figure out what's going on, and he kind of blames him for stuff that happened in the Giant War, which happened in Heroes of Olympus. So he has to figure out why all of 
the oracles have stopped working and so he ventures to a lot of oracles. This book he ventures to Indianapolis and it's just really interesting. Um, it's fascinating to see more mythology and I really love Apollo. He's hilarious. But I feel like what really makes the series is the other characters. Like the first book takes place in Camp Hot Blood and it's really neat to kind of just be in Camp Hot Blood the whole book. And this one actually takes place in Indianapolis. Okay. Spoiler alert for Blood of Olympus. Uh, Leo and Calypso are the side characters in this. And I never really was that big of a fan of either of them. I liked Leo. I thought he was enjoyable. He was good with the seven. But he was never really... I was never really that into him. So them as side characters didn't really help me propel it to keep going. Because, like, Apollo, like, it's funny to see him. Like, in Percy was in the first book. And he was in the end of the beginning. And I, of course, love that. Because I love Percy. He's, like, my favorite book character. It just took me a while to read it. But I will tell you, I was it was worth the read. I really enjoyed it. It's just not my favorite of Rick's books. But I am... Really excited to continue with this series and continue to see more of uh, characters from PGO and Heroes of Olympus, so. Okay, so next I read The Infernal Devices. So, I know I have different covers, I'm sorry. I tried to get these covers, but they only have this cover, it was so annoying. These books take place in the late 1800s in London, so it's really cool to see another institute, and it's just have the Shadow Hunters, and also the, but the main character is Tessa, who's a warlock, but she doesn't know she's a warlock. And she's actually from America. She's from New York City. So she ventures and kind of gets wrapped up in the shadow world. In London, it kind of discovers, like, wait a second, what am I? You know, like, how am I a warlock? How has that been hidden for me all my life? And, like, what kind of is her history? But this has been a claim to have the best love triangle in YA history. And I have to tell you, they're right. I personally love Will Herondale. He's perfect. Um, I really love his character development how much depth Cassandra Clare goes with these characters. I will tell you though that I feel like The Mortal Instruments is a little bit more suspenseful than these books. Um, not to say that they're not suspenseful, I just think that there's more of... I like the villains better in The Mortal Instruments than I do in this book, but they're st it's still really good. So yeah. Next I read Lady of Midnight and Lord of the Shadows from The Dark Artifices um, by Cassandra Clare. So, The Dark Artifices is the third series that she has in the Shadowhunter world. So, Lady of Midnight takes place five years after The Mortal Instruments ends, and so it's in 2012. It's in LA, at the LA Institute. And it's kind of interesting. I really like Emma Carstairs and Julian Blackthorne. They are Parapatai, but they've fallen in love, so it's a forbidden love because Parapatai can't fall in love. So that's really fascinating. I really like this story. It's hard really to explain it without spoiling anything in the other books. But I especially love this book because you find out more about the fairy world. And like in the mortal instruments, you find out more about like every other downworlder because you're exposed to them and a lot of the main characters look like every other one. But the fairies, you don't really know that much about. So they visit the Unseelie King, which we didn't really know of in the Mortal Instruments, and they also visit Seely Queen, which is kind of annoying in the Mortal Instruments. And so it's kind of interesting exploring more of the fairy world. And let me just tell you, all the characters are awesome. The Blackthorns are a huge family. And I don't know. I really like it, and Julian is a really good character. They all of the characters have so much character development, and I just love it. It's just these are just really well written and really, really addicting because. You can see their beasts, like, I can do lifts with these, and I finish them, like, in a day, both of them. So, yeah, really, really good. Also, I read, like, okay, so also I read When Devil Read Me, Rishi, by Sangiha Minon. I'm so sorry, Minon. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm really, really apologize. I suck at pronouncing things. <laughs> but anyway, so, I really enjoyed this book. It's, like, my favorite contemporary of, like, all time. Granted, I don't read that many contemporaries because... It's hard for me to get really invested, but this book is about Dimple and Rishi, obviously. So Dimple and Rishi have like an arranged marriage. So they meet at this coding camp, and Dimple doesn't know who Rishi is, and then they end up being partners together in this coding competition for an app, and it's just really good. I really, really enjoyed this book. Really well written, really nice read, and I don't know, it was just really, really, really good, and everyone loves it. So you should read it. Okay. So next I read Vampire Academy. So I read the first four and a half books. And this is by Rochelle Mead. So I will tell you though that 
When I was in 7th grade, when I originally read them, I liked them a lot better. Partly because I was in my vampire phase. I read Twilight in 4th grade. I also read The Vampire Diaries. I'm trying to think if I read anything more. I don't know. But I will tell you that reading them now, I don't like them as much. Um, I do like that the Dampiers, um, Rose is a Dampier, and her best friend Lissa is a Maroi. And they're bound which is kind of interesting and they continue the story kind of finding out more of that and all this stuff and it's go them going through high school and kind of figuring out their path in the world because Alyssa is a loss of the Dragomir. The Dragomirs are a royal family and that means that her guardian, which is hopefully going to be Rose, the main character, has to really be on her A-game and all this stuff and there's a bunch of drama of course about the them going against the Strigoi, which are the vampires that are basically the scary ones that everyone pictures, that have no feelings, no humanity, whatever. They drink other people's blood, like, to kill them. And yeah, but I do not like this as much as I did when I first read this. Because I don't really like Rose and Demetri's relationship, because I don't really like the student-teacher kind of weirdness. I know they're seven years apart, but that's just too much of an age gap, I feel. At this age, and me being Rose's age now, I'm like, that is kind of really disgusting. And so that's why I'm not that big of a fan of this series as much as I used to be. But it's still really enjoyable, lighthearted read if you want to read it. I'm just saying what my issues were with it. So next I read Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dorskinsky. I'm really sorry I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> wrong. This book was originally written in Russian, and then it was translated. So and I had to read it for AP Literature. And it was kind of interesting. Um, the main character, Raskinov, I think I'm saying it right. I don't know. Um, he ends up like murdering two women, and it kind of deals with all the guilt and suffering and how you can reach forgiveness. So it's kind of fascinating, but also like really slow. And it basically ate up all of my July because I was like, I'm not going to read any other books while I read this. And guess what? I really didn't. And so I didn't read as many books as I read last year during the summer because I was trying to finish this. But you know, you can read it, it's really a classic. Next I read Oedipus the King and Antigone by Sophocles. So these are Greek dramas and I had to read them also for AP literature. And I really enjoy them actually because I love Greek mythology obviously because I love Rick Riordan's world and I just love, he kind of introduced me to it so I kind of didn't, I was kind of used to it more often, and I was like, oh, they're, they're talking a lot about Apollo and his prophecies, you know? And it's just kind of funny to me how, I don't know, it's just really good. I really enjoyed these actually quick read, because they're only like, how many pages? Like six, seven, is 60, 70, you know, um, each. Well, maybe a bit more than that, whatever. But it's just really good, I think, and it's kind of a classic that you should read, and it doesn't take you that much time, so. Thanks, guys, for watching this. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, yeah, and also my shirt, if you're wondering what it says, no thanks, I'm booked all weekend because I had to buy it because it has a bell on it and it has books and like I'm a nerd so obviously I have to get it because I have a session with Beauty and the Beast. And it's only $6 at JCPenney so. So thanks guys for watching this video. Um, this is my 13 books. I actually read 20 books this summer but don't have all of them with me. But yeah, so thanks guys for watching. Have a really great summer. I know it, well the end of summer, you know. I know everyone goes to school at different times, but at least when you go to school, that means you're closer to the holiday season, which is my favorite time of year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, that's like my favorite song. Oh well, bye guys. See you later.